Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are you doing today? This is uh, number one, okay? And um, today we're probably going to be doing uh, Psalms 23. Okay? And I want to just go ahead and make sure, confirm that. Uh, with, with everything going on here. See where we're at. Okay, so how are you doing today? I'm, uh, I guess we uh, start praying, okay? Father God, in Jesus' name, please uh, administer everything uh, to your glory. Show us what we need to know today. Okay, so that uh, everything goes good according to your word. There's a lot of stuff going out there uh, in the world today. A lot of false teachings, a lot of craziness, right? And what we want to do is uh, we try to find out your truth. And that's why we're uh, sure I here. Confirm that. Uh, Finding out your truth. Okay, what we got here? Well, okay. that, with everything to do. And that's why we're uh, sure I here. Confirm that. Uh, Finding out your truth. Okay, what we got here? Uh, okay, that's working out good. All right, so let's go here. This one. All right, now I'm going to make sure. So what we're working on, we're working on, um, let me give it a decent pencil here. Here you go. We're working on uh, number 20, 26. And it's going to be Psalm 23. Yep. Psalm 23. Just put that right there so we don't get confused. All right. So. Uh, a lot of things have been going on. Uh, I see a lot of things going on out there. Okay. And some of those things I see is um, people, what I see out there going on, it makes me want to cry. Because a lot, uh, about the 1970s, 1960s, what they did is um, they, killed the, they killed a great revival. See, God has this revival been going on for uh, centuries, right? But especially in the 1900s, people have been crying before the Lord in the 1880s, 1890s. They've been crying and fasting, and they've been just trying to reach out to the Lord all around the world. And finally, there's a breakthrough in the 1900s, right? 1905, uh, Zuzu Street, right? We had a great uh, Pentecostal breakout, a great breakout, because God's no, no denominations. Okay, he don't care about your domination. <clears throat> All he cares about is uh, his word. What you did with Jesus Christ. Okay, that's his word made flesh. And the blood of Jesus you have over your heart. You're living a pure and holy life. Okay, that's what God cares about. But, in 1960s, 1970s, 80s, what they did there, in the 60s, 70s, they started taking out the blood of Jesus out of the services. And do you know what? I have a, a whole web page on that. Let me get it for you, okay? So you can see, this is not something I just thought about today. I've been thinking about this for years. For like 30 or 34 years, 30 or 40 years, I've been on, uh, on the trail of this, okay? Let me see. Uh, let's see. MP3. Because I have a, oh, I have a um, cassette tape. I made into an MP3, and I saved it since 1980. I saved it for 10, 20, 30, 
like uh, 43 years, I, I, I saved it. And I saved it for you. So today, at this time, I can show you and share it with you. Okay? Yeah, you see. And here, here it is right here. It is... On this web page, I'm going to get it right here. It's on the uh, healingoutreachcenter.net, and it's like the one, two, three, four, the fourth line down on the menu, the very first link of the Healing Outreach Center Net. Healing Outreach Center Net, about the fourth line down on the menu, the very first selection. It says, "Precious Blood of Jesus, Old School." Precious blood of Jesus, old school. Now we're gonna get that there. I'm gonna copy this link, right? They'll go right there on my Facebook where I'm at now, and I'm posting it. There you go. And uh, the whole thing is uh, healingoutreachcenter.net. Precious blood of Jesus, ultimate sermon, 1970s, old school. O of treasures. Okay? And that way, I mean, I mean like it. Okay, love my stuff. Love my post. That way you can uh, see it for yourself. Okay, now let's go over this. I'm not going to play the MP3 because it's over an hour. Right? Uh, probably an hour and a half of both of them. But let me see where you would find it at. Let me see. Oh, it's down. It's on here. It's a big long page. Probably toward the top. Let me see. There it is. You know, there's a a red thing, a red uh, graph, a, a red picture, right there on this page. First of all, you get to the menu, and you know you're gonna see a big menu. So you go, you go scroll down. How many times? Page down. We get to the top of the menu there, uh, and healing outreach center net. Precious blood of Jesus. Old school. Press uh, page down. One, two, three. Okay, and you will see the red. Uh, picture it says in the name of Jesus and through the blood and power the devil is hereby evicted from my situation and my life evicted all right and then right below that you see down uh, right before right above where it says Marcus Lamb the blood is precious there's download both sides of mp3 a and b right above the video okay download both sides mp3 a and b and it also has above that a uh, copy and paste ulrs if you want to copy and paste it but if you just click like say you click a what happens you click a and it's going to start playing right but uh but if you press the three buttons up and down, the three buttons in a row, a download button will come up, and you can download it. So I recommend you download these and treasure these, okay? Because uh, they are uh, very, very precious <clears throat> to me. It tells a story. It tells a story about how they try to sabotage the church of God. The enemies come in, okay? The enemies come in and sown all kind of weeds in the church. The enemy has come in and put a stranglehold on the church of God. So there's no more church there. The devil moved into the church, what I'm telling you, and he squeezed all the life out of the church. So there's no more. People don't know how to get saved anymore. People have dismissed the, uh, the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I had pastors tell me they don't have no need for the Holy Ghost. Because it's just in a way <coughs> that their congregation is so diverse that they couldn't possibly teach everything about the Holy Ghost. And that's the dumbest thing there is because the Holy Ghost is the teacher, right? See, 
That's the thing. They try and do something. They are trying to do the teaching, okay? What they need to do is just shut up with the big fat self and get out of the way. And let the Holy Ghost do it. In fact, you know, the Holy Ghost is so precious, you don't even know the Holy Ghost is there unless you call for him. And then uh, they try to take the blood and the life out of the church. And then they try to take the, uh, steal the Holy Ghost away from the people, which they did. And and, uh, and then what they do is they move these, uh, during the war, the Vietnam War, they gave a, uh, a credit to the people who didn't want to go to war. The, uh, the objectionists, you know, conscientious, conscientious objectors, and made those preachers. So, uh, so you ain't got nobody with balls in the church no more. Excuse my language. But Moses said in the army, like if you read the, the first five books of the Bible, somewhere in there, uh, you can look it up, uh, put stones, okay? Look up everything where it says about stone, the stones through your e-digital sword, and you're finding the first five books. Moses said to check, make sure the men have stones. And the same thing, and the stones mean in the Old Testament balls. Make sure that the men have balls. Okay? They ain't got no balls in the church no more. You know, they got they got these fairies, and they're in a church they don't want to tell nobody about no sin. And they don't want to tell anybody to get saved. Or they, they don't want to have the balls to tell somebody about the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. They don't have the time to sit there and have patience with people, make sure every single one gets the reborn. See, that's a lot of work to be a minister, okay? Because you got to look at your, first of all, you have to um, uh, go uh, connect, have a good connection with God and search His mind. So the bread of heaven just comes to you and you can break it like we're doing now. We're breaking the bread of heaven and feeding the children the bread. Okay, the bread of healing, right? The bread. There's only one bread, and it's the bread of heaven. That's the Holy Ghost. When you got the Holy Ghost, when Jesus is a great baptizer, and when he baptizes you, see, John the, baptized, John the Baptist did the water thing, baptizing water. That's for purification and stuff like that. But you know what? Uh, Jesus I took it to a new level. He baptizes you in fire of the Holy Ghost. And when Jesus baptizes you in fire, you believe me, you, you baptize. And he didn't uh, shortchange you either. He gave you the whole Holy Ghost. Okay? The, all the Holy Ghost. Okay? It's yours. Just like he got it. Okay? Because he, he doesn't do go halfway. All right? Like in the church today, they say that uh, when you got your Holy Ghost, you only get like, um, if the Holy Ghost was a hundred, uh, 100 pennies, you only got one penny. And this guy here got two pennies, and that sister got three pennies, but nobody got a hundred pennies. So you got to keep uh, and eternally searching to make sure you collect the full set of pennies, of a hundred of them, to make sure you got the Holy Ghost 100%. Well, see, that's a bunch of bull. That's the kind of bull... Uh, and, and weed seeds the devil sows into the uh, body of Christ that's the terrors because I want to tell you when uh, the, Jesus uh, never goes and gives anybody a half a cup of anything okay when Jesus it says in, like uh, the, the Lord is my shepherd and I believe this is the Psalm 1 Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd right when he gives you a cup he gives it to you running over, okay? He, the cup he gives you is running over, and it's not half full. It's not leaving you wanting more. He says, the water I give you, and like, like in John, about verse 7, 38, and along there, says the water I give you will never run dry. It will just keep flowing over. It's bubbling up to your everlasting life. And like, you know, one the prophet Elijah, when he went to see the widow, and she, she, the widow gave the prophet the last bit of bread and oil that she had. She said she's going to bake a cake for her kids and herself and die. But, you know, the prophet says, well, give me to make, make me a cake and oil first. Okay? And feed me before you feed yourself and your kids if you're fixing to die. Okay? <laughs> okay. So what she did... If she honored the prophet and she made her last food 
and, and uh, with the oil and gave it to the prophet to eat. And after she did that, her little cr uh, uh, cruise oil, a cup of oil, well, she kept her oil in a, in a barrel of flour where, where she had all the flour there. It just kept coming back day after day. She'd have a little bit in there and she'd uh, do the same thing, give it to the prophet and cook it and give it to him. Then she'd go back in there and look at it and there'd be more in there for her and her son. And then the next day there'd be more in there, another scoop for the prophet. Then she'd go back and look. There'd be more there for her and her son. So that went all the days of the famine or whatever, how long ever that needed to be lasted, it lasted. God is not short. He don't go around, around shortchanging you. Like this, these prophets, you know, like this one. You got a whole new breed of prophets now. You got one like this Ken Christmas. <clears throat> I like I like to listen to him, too, you know. I got nothing against him, but I tell you what. Every time you hear him, he'll be spewing out death all over the place. You know, like a fire driver, a breathing dragon, <sighs> spilling death all over the people. You know, talking death. You know, I thought Jesus was in the life business. <clears throat> Jesus came to pour out his, Jesus took the death to give us life. Okay, before I was a dead person, I was a dead spirit, I didn't know nothing. I, You know what? And Jesus killed off that person with life. Okay, he took my took me from the kingdom of darkness and death into the kingdom of life and light. But here it is Christmas, and he's using the word Christmas like he's passing out gifts or something. It's spewing out death all over the place, every word. It's a shame, you know. And not only that, with uh, ins insult to injury, then he's saying old people like me, you know what he's saying? He says, uh, we are old wineskins. And people like me, uh, God is going to take us out <coughs> because uh, we're now up to hip with a new program because uh, Jesus got new wine and he, he needs new wineskins so nothing gets uh, tangled up. So to speak, okay, it does not get his exact words, but uh, that's what he's saying. Now, I know Jesus said in the past, in the Old Covenant, uh, it, when uh, during the Gospels, during, you know, what he was saying is um, that you take new wine and you put it in new wineskins. Okay, I can tell you where that, that, that's at. But that was the Old Covenant, okay? And what he did is recreate our spirit. And gave us a new covenant, uh, a new and better covenant, like it says in Hebrews. Okay, a new and living way where we go to a high priest. And, and a high priest, you know, right through a high priest, and we talk to God the Father direct. Jesus said, and Jesus didn't tell us to pray to him and worship him. Jesus said, uh, when he taught us to pray, pray like this. And the first word out of his mouth is Father. And it ended the prayer like saying, All the honor and glory and majesty to you, Father. You know what I mean? You want me to dig that prayer out? Okay. Say, uh, Jesus taught pray. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Well, maybe we just gonna say they say the prayer. Oh. Okay, let's dig it up. It goes like this, okay? Um, first of all, it's located in Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 13. And this new uh, international version, the NIV version, goes like this. 
Okay, I'm just going to uh, go, go and pray. I already told you it's Luke 11, 1 through 13. It goes like this. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Okay? Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sinned, who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, uh, then goes into the midnight hour. You know, uh, this talks about bread too, you know. I mean, it talks about uh, verse 5. It talks about, then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight. This is now, right? And say, friend, uh, lend me three loaves of bread. This, I really think this is talking about the parables and the three wise virgins, five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. I mean, this feels like that. Then, Jesus said to them, on verse 5, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me. I have no food to offer him. Okay? Just like they were our oil. Okay, give us your oil, right? And suppose one uh, inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked. And my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity speaking, I guess, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So that tells me right there, if you think the door is locked, if you think, you know, it's too late to get the oil, just keep crying. Just keep uh, begging for it, okay? Because, uh, like even this late hour, don't think it's too late. Just keep on praying and crying because uh, all eternity is at stake. It says, you know, you can get God out of bed, okay? Even though the door's locked. Did you catch that? Even though the door's locked and I'm in bed with my children and, you know, uh... He, he says, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, but yet, because of your shameless odyssey, he will get up and give you as much as you need. Then it says here in verse 9, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the uh, knocks the door will be opened. And then it talks about the Holy Spirit here. This is about the Holy Spirit in verse eleven. And you know, so many times, you know, in, in the Baptist church or any kind of church, you know, organized religion, they can't really predict or. Uh, control the Holy Ghost because sometimes the Holy Ghost will be talking about their evil plans and what they're doing and exposing them, right? I mean, you no, know, telling people in the church what to do and, and directing things, right? And they like to control things because they have all the little programs, they have their pl plans, they have their writers, and they know which sermons make the money. So they have all the sermons all figured out and all planned ahead of time according to, uh, you know, how much money they're going to draw in from the people uh, through the TV and through the programs to pay the budget, you know, and all the retired preacher bills. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit can't have, they don't want the Holy Spirit in there telling people directing people to send the money somewhere else and not to give it here and not to give it there. They want people that they can just control. Like, uh, 
like if they were a mindless, mindless zombie. Okay, they don't want no one educated by the Spirit of the Living God. Okay, they want you to be a blank slate so that they can control you and they can put any kind of nonsense into your head and you listen to them like they're doing today. These people in the churches are zombies. They got uh, no brains at it whatsoever and they do anything the preacher says. Anything supernatural, they go, yeah, 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 yeah. Supernatural, yeah, 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 we're in this supernatural, right? But you know what? There's two uh, supernatural things in this earth. <clears throat> and then we go back to the beginning. There's a, the tree of eternal life. And then there's a tree of uh, good and evil. You know, a tree of knowledge and, and wisdom. So what is it you want? Eternal life or you want the other one? Because, you know, this is my beginning ahead of myself. So let's go here with the Holy Ghost, okay? Um, which, uh, which, it says verse 11, okay, verse 9, and then it goes 10, 11, like that, 13. So I say to you, and we're in chapter uh, 11 of Luke, Luke 11, about verse 9 through 13 right now. Yeah. So, uh, a, a new international version. So I say to you, asking it be given to you, seeking you will find, knocking the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. Okay? Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Okay, you see? A lot of people will be talking about the Holy Spirit like it's... uh you know, a snake or something. A snake or a scorpion. Right? The devil trying to flip her around and making it bad. When it's not. The Holy Spirit is like a, a fish or an egg. Okay? Now, I guess, you know, uh, if you give somebody an egg, you know, they used to eat the eggs. Uh, they used to just get them out of the nest, open the top up. And, you know, and eat them right there, just like that. Suck it right down. Raw. They eat their eggs raw. You, uh, when we think about giving somebody an egg to eat, you're thinking about maybe, I would normally think of a, a boiled egg. But uh, I, they don't, uh, you know, they don't have electric stoves back then. Okay. But here we go. And, and that's... Uh, Okay, and, and that's uh, that scripture right there. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to post it. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to tell you what where I found it at, too. Okay, let's go right here. Right there. Let's post it again. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I already, I already posted that page. Let me get this one. Let me see. Okay. All right. Hmm. 
Okay, I, I got it. It just took a little time to, to get that, find it, so I come up in a browser so I can post it. And that's from BibleGateway.com. And then when you get there, you can search for the passage. It's uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 13. And what I did is I posted on my Facebook because that's where I'm uh, uploading my first video to. Let's see how it sounds. Okay, what we got here? There you go. Still good. So, uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on by uh, in the church today. They try to get rid of everything, so there's no power in the church, and they're sowing the wrong things in the church. You know, they're telling people about foolishness. Nowadays, what they do, the devil is mocking God by doing this. He's telling people stuff like, you know, he's he's getting these uh, preachers, uh, you know, to go, you know, like, for instance, like Sidroth, where it says it's supernatural. Well, you know, you really can't go by nothing, nothing on there at all, nothing whatsoever. I mean, I used to listen to those stories. I used to like to listen to them about talk about what people say about heaven and this rapture dream and that rapture dream and you know uh, what God taught in this one or that one. But I'm afraid that people are just making up these stories so they can have airtime or they can sell a book, just like uh, on YouTube, you know. What they're doing on YouTube is they just produce anything just so people will uh, listen to it. They go and search YouTube and find out who's got the most hits. And then they turn around and produce the same content but switch around. And uh, just so they get people to listen to them and they can get the advertiser money and and they get, get their hands uh, filled with riches. But now see on Sidroth, that's the same type of thing. And just think of Sidroth as a, a YouTube type thing. It's not YouTube, but it's on YouTube. But it's the same, same type of principle. People want exposure because when they get exposure, they can sell the book or tape. All right, they can just anyone can just go around go around the internet, collect a whole bunch of information, make up a story, and then go and tell Sid Roth here. Look, and Sid Roth will put it on your on his newscast, <coughs> and then here he even come up with uh, some advertising uh, packaging for it, and sell it for thirty five dollars a pop, and uh, there you go, you have uh, a <coughs> oh home-brewed, uh, supernatural, mumbo-jumbo. <clears throat> there was a preacher one time, his name was Peter Popoff, and I, he was like giving out words of knowledge and uh, two people, when they came to see him on TV live, he was a television evangelist, <clears throat> and come to find out what people took a radio into the... Um, a radio receiver and a tape recorder into the service and found the frequency his wife was uh, communicating to him. He had a, a hidden microphone in his ear and when the people would come, out, come in, they'd fill out prayer request cards and then his wife would go through all the cards and pick out a few, right? The people in the audience that fill out these cards and then he, he she would, uh, uh, in the back, uh, whisper to him, uh, call the names and addresses out of the people, right? And he will call those people forward, and then he would just read the prayer request, like and change around a little bit, but say, "This is what you've been thinking about, huh?" And today, what people say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and they would eat that up, right? But that was just a radio. <clears throat> he he wasn't having a, a information from God at all. So now um, I, I'm concerned about the church. 
you have all these people they have super like just like YouTube and you got Sidorov it's like on TV but he's got seducing the people not intentionally but the people are reacting the same way they would react to YouTube for the hits the same way you react uh, you create content for your mobiles for the hits you know you got people falling off the tables injuring themselves so they get good uh, good uh, 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 video to make the hits you know you got people taking the, the ultimate selfie falling off cliffs and killing themselves so they can have a hit so you know what that's all they want they want to make those hits they want to make the money they um, want to type up some content or books give it a set off they package it and then uh, they might even say well this is so good they're going to even start preaching it okay because this is what sells the fish and bread don't sell no more. That's old hat. The fish and bread, they say the fish and bread, uh, the good, but Jesus' gospel is the old wine skin, old wine skin. Okay? They need new wine skin. They need new age thinking. Okay? They need new miracles and they need new content. And I tell you, uh, they come up with these like gems, diamonds, right? Uh, they have people working for them in the, in the audience, and they may buy, you know, twenty thousand dollars worth of diamonds or gems or whatever. And when people start getting up and singing hallelujah or whatever they do, okay, uh, they might put a, a couple of gems around the audience, you know, here and there, just to see that, right? So. They have people say, "Hey, look, I got a gem in my uh, in my seat. Look what I got in my seat. Well, I got one too." And pretty soon, everybody's selling more books. They're selling more tapes. They're getting on Sitter off. They're getting everywhere, and the people are actually testifying that they got one, and they took it to a jeweler, and it was worth eight hundred dollars, right? So. They, uh, it's called like advertising money, okay? You have to advertise, pay advertising money, so why not just buy some gems and give them to the people? And that way they get so excited about it, then you know what? It would be like a, a no, new move of God, and you, who knows what, what might go sweep the country, and we'd be billionaires like Ken Coppola next year. <clears throat> All right? And another thing they're doing is they got, uh, like, the, they, they, they got the Holy Ghost like the cloud. They say, uh, <clears throat> but, you know, when he preaches, he preaches in a cloud, right? I won't tell you who it is, but uh, no one else can see the cloud except for him. But I, I feel the cloud, so I know what he's saying when the cloud comes around you and you can talk and, and preach and you feel the cloud, right? <clears throat> but uh, then he says... He puts his hand into the cloud and when he pulls his hand out right after making some affirmations and stuff he's got oil on his hands where he can just you know uh, put it in, off into a cup and it fill like a quarter of the cup uh, with oil from his hands by putting his hand in a glory cloud when it comes and by making affirmations, then he has all this extra oil. And then he compares that to David's cup well, oh, when God fills up his cup. But God fills up David's cup to overflowing. See? This is the same type of thing as uh, they taking Jesus. <clears throat> Ever see the, at the wedding, at a big wedding or a big restaurant, they have a big piece of meat? Like a big cow thigh or a big cow buttocks or something. Well, that there is called a steamship round or a giant pot roast, okay, in simple terms. And what these ministers are doing with these scams, uh, I'm going to tell you why I'm calling them scams. They're taking and they're just uh, having people come up like if they're in a buffet and they're giving them a slice of of meat they're slicing Jesus and selling Jesus one slice at a time just like you go through a buffet okay 
uh, give me a, a piece of this pudding, give me some of that slaw. Oh yeah, and we'll take some of this anointing too. Give me a slice of that. And I better get some of this turkey or this slice of this bird, this anointing, before I run out. And this other one's on sale. I better get some of that. So they make you feel that the Jesus is Holy Spirit when you were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And like that's not going to be enough. <sighs> You need to collect all the anointings too. Just like all those games they play. You know, they used to. Ken Copeland, the Word of Faith, is notorious for this. They send out these things to all the people that support them. And it's like a page uh, for a prayer request. And it says, take this piece and, and take this stamp and put it over here. And then cut this piece out. Just like the clear publishers clearing house when you gotta move this stamp and put here and put that stamp and put here and they got two envelopes one envelope you send it to if you send money okay and order something you send it to this one uh one state or uh, address and if you don't send anything if you just want to put it in for the drawing you send it <laughs> to another another state okay so they separate the two things by miles hundreds of miles Send money, money go this way, and they don't order. You know, just want to request for to win a lot of money, go this way. <laughs> so uh, that what they're doing is wrong. Okay. What we need now, it nothing has changed, because Jesus, God the Father, has made this from uh, made this plan of salvation from the beginning of the world, uh, before the world even began. He already had it figured out. And he already knows you, okay? He knows all your problems just as, uh, as long as he, all, he knows he's uh, eternal, infinite, very intelligent, calculating, uh, prophesying God, okay? Spirit of prophecy. All right. He, he knows how much sunlight at this time it needs for everything to work. How many animals, or what species, what kind of minerals, what kind of vitamins, what kind of comets need to fly by? You know, how much asteroids he needs. He needs. He knows who needs to be in government, who needs to run the governments. He knows w what the boundaries of the countries needs to be. He knows w what kind of fish needs to be in the ocean. He knows how much ice from the glacier needs to melt. And he knows how to, the degree of which the planet is supposed to be tilted to get the right sunlight so we don't all die. And he knows how the uh, how much force the Earth needs to have in order to stay in orbit around the Sun and and the Moon too, and for all these little moons around all these little planets and solar system to work, and all these all these uh, solar systems and all these galaxies and all these galaxies and the universe and everything just spinning around, he's got it. He knows what's needed. Okay, so what he said was needed in the beginning, and I don't think he changed anything. Cause I know uh, I'm saved. I'm still here. I mean, can't 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 Christmas is spewing out death out to all the old prophets and grandpas. And he says, "Grandpa's gotta go." Okay, because Grandpa. is old wineskin. Well, we need we need the new wineskin. We need the new gospel. That's what Ken Christmas is saying. Uh, his gospel is one where he he's, he's blows death all over the place. Okay, it's death and destruction. It's lightning and fire. It's doom and gloom, right? Oh, see, at this time, even Jesus' gospel might be doom and gloom, but it's it's life and peace for his uh, b believers. I, I know that everything's falling apart in this world, but I'm not. I'm going stronger every day. Grandpa's not going anywhere. In fact, I might put a spanking on, on that can't Christmas. Father God, in Jesus' name, can't Christmas try to get rid of me. He says I'm old an uh, old fart that uh, ain't in with the new deal on the gospel. I mean, he wants to get rid of the old, rewrite the gospel just like the Pope does it on Mount Sinai. 
that he wants to get in some of the action or they rewrite your gospel. And I, I, I'm with uh, Catherine Kuhlman, you know, and all the other great saints of the old time. Well, we believe the gospel the way you wrote it. We believe in the Holy Ghost, the one who wrote the gospel to teach us and to get us through. Okay, we don't need no diamonds from heaven. And I'm going to tell you right now, that reminds me to tell you, why the diamonds from heaven and the oily clouds on your hands, like that kind of stuff, and the gold dust from heaven, and even they got sapphire powder falling down from heaven, physical sapphire powder. They're not just uh, talking about gold dust like an illusion, they're talking about real gold dust. Uh, gold dust uh, falling from heaven and going on a stage and everything. And, and sapphire dust getting in your hair and, and real diamonds in the seat where they can take the jeweler and get them tested and stuff like that. And they're talking about stuff like that, right? And oil, real oil, when they stick it into clouds, right? Okay, see? Satan was made out of fire and he had all kinds of jewels. He was anointed cherub, and he had jewels all over the place. He walked on the, on the stones of God, uh, the gems of God, and I mean, he was just decked out, okay? He was the most beautiful angel of ever. He had pipes in him, right? Well, I, like I was reading about Bigfoot's language, <laughs> Bigfoot's language, when he inhaled, he, he and, and uh, Bigfoot, when he inhales, he talks, and when he exhales, he talks. So he can do it both ways, right? But our species of man, when we speak, we do it on the exhale. Where the Bigfoot does it on the inhale and exhale. But Satan may be the same way. Because he had pipes when he inhaled and exhaled. God told him what to say. Because he was uh, helping God create the universe uh, through God's power but singing singing the words God told him to sing making the music for it I don't know exactly how uh, God had Satan working right but uh, Satan had pipes in him to play music he was a musical instrument just like some of these superstars like our musical instruments okay but you know what happened it went to his head because one day, and I got this part out of the Revelation for a movie, okay? One day, God told uh, uh, was creating the universe, and he created this planet and everything, made a nice world. And then he told the devil to uh, sing a song of how uh, this man of mud is going to have dominion over all everything that the devil just created with God's help. I mean... What the devil created for God, uh, with following his instructions. Okay, and God giving him the power to do it. Okay, so he created that. And then what happened is, uh, uh, then he God wanted to put uh, him to sing the song about how man is going to be the God of all that. The man, because he just made God just made us out of the dust, out of the mud of the earth. And then he's all the fiery self, right? He's all the diamonds and all the glitter and everything. And he says, no, 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 no. Put an X on that God, okay? I, I got all the glitter. I have all the sapphire dust. I got the gold dust, okay? Uh, I'm the man, okay? I have the oil from heaven, okay? I'll walk on your stones. I got the dew all around me. I put my hands anywhere there's oil, right? I'm the anointed cherub, okay? I got the oil, right? I got the glory cloud around me. I only sing when there's a glory cloud around me. I got the oil on my hands. I got sapphire. Not only have I got uh, the star studded rhinestone cowboy, but I got diamonds everywhere. I got more diamonds than Amy Grant. Okay, I got more diamonds than uh, I got more chariots than Elvis. Okay, or I got more, I got more pizzazz than Sidoroth, and I got I got more, more, more stories than Sidoroth could ever tell. 
Okay, I am the anointed cherub. I got I'm more anointed than anyone else. I got the diamonds. I got the sapphires. I got the you know the the diamonds. I got the big diamonds, the small diamonds. Uh, I got gold dust. I got silver dust. I got everything you can think of. Okay. So I, I'm the I since I'm over here singing everything and I did all the work helping you, right? And you know what? I did what you told me to do and I did it. You see, I did it. Now you want to take uh, you want to uh, put me uh, make me down. You want to put me under uh, this man of mud. You want to put mud all over my style, right? You want to throw dirt on me, right? So no, 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 God, no, no. You know what? You slipped up, right? You're doing things the old way, right? What we got here, I got the new wine skin. I got the new wine, and I'm moving up there to Jerusalem on high. Okay? Uh, your throne, God, is irrelevant, and I'm going to be moving my throne up above yours. Now you're going to work for me. And you know what God said? And the, uh, the word coming out of God's mouth, you know, caused the devil to uh, be thrown out of heaven like lightning from um, east to west. Okay? He got thrown down to the earth. And then what Adam was supposed to do is throw him off the earth. And that would have been the end of it. But he didn't do that. So what we have to do is we have to get the blood of Jesus. We have to get empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we have to, in our lives, throw the devil out of our life. In Jesus' name, by his blood, and, and, and uh, every one of us, okay? We, we have to personally, we, every one of us has a Garden of Eden in our soul. We all have a Garden of Eden. We have a war within us. And the Bible is as relevant as it was the day it was written. And even more relevant. Okay? Nothing's changed. Okay? Uh, there's the, uh, the, the Old Testament. Had, uh, Jesus had, was the, the wine. The, um, let's see. He, the water. The Old Testament was the water. Jesus died and turned that water into spirit. Be okay, before they would take the water and just cleanse themselves the best they can. They had all them sacrifices. But now with the new and living way, like it says in Hebrew, Jesus uh, made us into quickening spirits. And he's going to make our bodies the same way. Now let me read your scripture, okay? We're going to find it that says in Hebrews, new and living way okay and also I, I read what that guy says of the diamonds that he even had them tested I mean Sid Roth put there and they even had them tested okay look if Sid Roth did the testing then you know they gave them a, a good diamond because they, they bought the diamond and put it there okay N now if uh, that person did his own testing, you don't know when, that, when it is. So let's just say they had, uh, they have some diamonds there. They gave away, they, they, they planted or whatever they did, and they tested them, right? That's just seed money because they're going to make a whole bunch of money over that, over this false doctrine. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 25, in the NASB, A New and Living Way, Gateway, Bible Gateway. Okay, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, through his flesh, verse 21, and since we have a great high, high priest over the house of God, Point to let us approach God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts 
sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and from our bodies washed with pure water, let's hold firmly to the confession of our hope. And I, I, I don't know how to say it any clearer than that. Okay? He had his the veil pierced through his own body a new and living way. I mean, it, it is no way that they can uh, do any better than that. They can't recreate that, okay? That's something you can't recreate. Okay? You can't uh, counterfeit that. So, uh, what they want you to do is they want you to take your uh, the new and living way and change it for a trinket. You know, I, I think the Indians did that when they bought the Massachusetts or something. Uh, when the pilgrims first came here, they bought an island or something from the Mayflower and they gave the Indians some trinkets, right? For, for the good land they had. So here, I posted this here, and it's from the BibleGateway.com. I guess this is the second way, uh, the second thing I posted there. So if you don't have an esword.org, not esword.net, esword it's e-sword, e-sword.net, that's the website, we can download that, or... You can go to the uh, by uh, Bible Gate, the BibleGateway.com, by www.BibleGateway.com. Okay, <clears throat> is www.BibleGateway.com. Okay, and this would be Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 25, or you can just look it up in your own Bible. Do you have a Bible? I'm not sure if we have Bible. Or not. Let me uh, let's see, copy the link address. I'm going to put a, a, a picture of myself right here. I'm going to put, put, put this is an old picture when I was a little uh, younger and fatter. But let me put, post that right there. Let me see. Okay. Huh, I want to post a little picture when it come up. Well, I'll get another little picture. We don't need it. Okay. Oh, I need that. Okay. So, okay, uh, brothers and sisters, let's say a little prayer. Uh, Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the new and living way. And we see how sinful that is for people to make up, uh, try to replace the what you did on, on Calvary with the cross of Jesus. Uh, that is the only way. That's the way you, you've made it. And uh, you already transitioned the church you said you had two wives. You moved, uh, you had Rachel and Leah, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Leah was the Old Testament, which is the God's wife forever. And then you had the New Testament, which is kind of like Rachel. And Rachel's kind of wild, just like John the Baptist. And then you gave us the Holy Ghost, right? And uh, the, the, the people... They don't like wild. You know what they like? They like everything where they can uh, control it. Well, you can't control the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is wild. All right? So we thank you, Lord, uh, that though you showed us throughout your whole word, word Jesus, God the Father, there's uh you got you got Leah and you got Rachel, you got that's you got your bride of Christ right, we are the bride of Christ, 
And I think the bride of Christ is both through Leah and Rachel. Maybe uh, Leah has got to do with the um, like the Israel state more or less because the Israel state still got to go uh, and, and be, they all got to cry for you and be saved all once as a whole nation. And that's the Leah. And the New Testament is Rachel. So what you got there is you're going to rapture up Rachel first and then deal with Leah because she's a little bit stubborn, right? But anyway, uh, all those two is just the bread of Christ in different stages. Or is Leah, or do you got two? You got uh, the bride of Christ and, and Jehovah's wife forever. Jehovah's wife forever, and you have uh, the bride of Christ. Do you know what? I don't know everything, and I say that for I say that for real. I don't know everything, and sometimes your your glorious awesomeness can be confusing. But the Holy Ghost is my teacher. But I know all this stuff is uh, scams. Don't you fall for even the elite. Even the elite will be deceived. You stick with the blood of Jesus. In Romans chapter 12, 1 through 3, where you put the cross of Jesus right there on your brain of him dying. Okay, dying. His flesh was pierced. We just went that through yesterday. He was crunching up, scrolling, going like this all oh, for nine hours, six hours from nine to three. And you know what? Dying and bleeding out and feeling sick. And nobody was there helping him. They were just laughing at him. And kids over there trying to poop all over the place. And people peeing, horses peeing. Uh, all kind of, it's a dirty place because out there where they took him is where they take the trash from Jerusalem. They took him to the, they crucified him in the, where they took the, the garbage place. And then the, God's Holy One, the scriptures have to all be fulfilled and it says God's Holy One will not see corruption. Then you got all them flies trying to lay eggs all over the place and um, all the blood is just uh, inviting flies and bugs to lay eggs and, and corruption. To, uh, with the open wounds and sores and uh, you know what I mean all that the filthiness and bacteria all over the place okay but uh, God was able to handle it all and God got Jesus through it without even his legs being broken and even had arranged for God, Jesus to be guarded so uh his testimony in the Gospels would stand up in a court of law. Okay? All right. Because all this is about a court of law and, and Jesus is heaven uh, about the devil uh, being uh, tried and convicted. And his followers and that kind of nonsense. Okay. In Jesus' name, we thank you for your wisdom today, Lord God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. And we're not going to move from the blood of Jesus, all the Holy Spirit, our teacher. In Jesus' name, we don't need no flash in a pan. Okay? We don't need the glitter. We don't need gold dust. God supplies all of our needs as if God is going to give us a short, trying to short us or something. God is trying to shortchange you, right? That's what they're trying to say? No way. God is abundance. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. So t now take a coffee break and come back in 15 minutes. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And bring friends, like, share, and subscribe. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.